My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we are going to talk about pumping losses. Now I've done videos about this before, and what I wanted to show you is an actual example. So, um, let me get that pen, I know I'm fucking right in front of the camera, but shit happens. So, um, you know, when I did that video about pumping losses, a lot of people said, yes, but one piston goes up and one piston goes down, so they equalise out. You would think so. However, here I've got the top casing. You can see the line here where the crank would sit. So obviously this is filled, this is filled with crank. <laughs> and there's a big web in the way as well. So basically you can see this gap here. And I'll take the cases off and rearrange it so you can see it a bit better. But we need to see this in situ. Now, the top, the bottom case goes on and there are gaps and openings underneath the caps there. However, when this piston, so just say we're looking right down at the bottom, and it's the bottom of the piston. So, for visualisation reasons, we've got a piston like this. But it's down there in the bottom of the bore, and then when it comes up like this, it is going to displace the same amount of volume that this cylinder is. So this is a, um, let's just say for simplicity, this is a thousand, so each cylinder would be 250cc. Regardless, whatever your capacity for each cylinder, one piston will go down, the other will come up. So this volume in here will basically be compressed, a bit like a two-stroke and it has basically got to make its way through that little hole. Now if you look at the surface area of this piston, so the surface area of that piston versus that hole, you can see that this is a restriction. Now, there are openings at the bottom as well, and those openings are usually larger than the piston bore. However, when we're dealing with flow and pressures and stuff like that, and velocities, you've got to remember it's the actual, the actual atoms, the molecules themselves, the speed of, um, in a sense, the pressure wave, so basically the energy, the energy density wave that moves through, is at the speed of sound. However, the actual molecules themselves have to accelerate. Now, they're silly light, you know what I mean, they're stupidly light, and they don't lag far behind that pressure wave, but that's still got to happen. So what happens is, is one piston comes up, the other one goes down in this respect. So this one's moving towards bottom dead centre, this one's moving towards top dead centre. And it takes time for all the molecules in here to basically squeeze through and basically force out here. That is a pumping loss in two respects. Number one is the piston coming up has got to squeeze the air through there and the other passages. This passage is closer, so the molecules are, want to, are going to want to flow in this general direction and they'll have inertia and then they have momentum. So the flow is predominantly going through here. And obviously there's a big fucking crankshaft in the way, so it's got to squeeze around the webs in there. There's a bit of space in the middle, um, stuff like that. There's a big conrod in the way and stuff like that. So basically they've just got to squeeze through this gap here. That's what, th this is all they've got to, you know, squeeze through. And there's the bits at the bottom, but that's as the pressure wave propagates through the whole thing. And you can see that they're all different. This one has a giant opening for the clutch. This one has an opening here, but these two are a bit different. This one's closed off, that's blanked off at the bottom, there's nothing there. This one is the smallest one. And you might think, well, they just equalise out, but the fact of the matter is, is this engine's going like fucking crazy, and any kind of restriction like this, you know, is a pumping loss, because this piston has got to come down and literally physically push the air out of the way. It is clouting into the air molecules to accelerate them, to impart that velocity to them. The second thing is, is on this side, you could be on the compression stroke, just say, and as this piston's falling, or going towards top dead centre, it's falling from our view, so it's going that way. Um, this pressure region, because all this air that is here isn't there yet, it's starting to fill it up. This is very low, and on the other side of it, there's the compression stroke, so basically you are compressing a mixture. Again, that is a pumping loss, you know. So this comes back to if you lower the crankcase pressure, um, you know, with all these guys who are trying to draw a low pressure region in your crankcase, and that other video I did about that, it kind of helps in some respects, but it's detrimental in others. So in other words, basically, you are, it's a compromise, like everything in engineering. If you gain here, you usually lose somewhere else and stuff like that. But 
um, some engines, so uh, Andy's got a uh, fire blade and it has scallops, literally scallops on the skirts, just to open this out because this hole is so big, but it could be bigger if you scallop this out. Now, that doesn't mean run around and get your Dremel out and start fucking gnawing big bits out your cylinder. You can do, but you need to see exactly where your skirt goes, stuff like that, blah, 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 blah. Um, but yeah, they have scallop cylinder, scallop spigots, basically, scallop barrels. Um, just to basically reduce the restriction through there because like I say you look at the size of this hole in here compared to that surface area there it's just it's not the same and this backwards and forwards even though you might think that they basically um, you know they uh, equalize out it's not as simple as that there's this always this time factor and with these pistons going at 10,000 rpm and stuff like that well the pistons aren't going 10,000 rpm the crank is going 10,000 rpm and the pistons are going up and down up and down up and down at 20,000 strokes for 10,000 rpm you know shifting this air backwards and forwards because that's the thing it'll shift from here but then all of a sudden the fucking piston's coming back down again. So it's got to slow down, it gets clouted by the piston, accelerated the other way. And this back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, back, forth is just like the same accelerations that you see on a piston, but just for the molecules of nitrogen and oxygen and stuff that's basically just the air that's inside here. So this is why we have crankcase breathers to try and alleviate some of that pressure. And in this engine, there's a crank, there's a, a hole there, there's basically hole passages that make their way to the crankcase breather that was on top, that plastic valved section, which is this thing, you know what I mean? So basically they've, they've just left this and there is, this hole here can only be as, hole, as big as the holes of the passages that it releases to, otherwise it's going to just be cause another restriction. But yeah, you know, people just think these engines balance out. It actually is a problem with boxer engines, because boxer engines push out and then push back in. When they push out, they're creating, there's a big pressure drop, and then when they come together again, there's a big pressure increase. Um, that's, in a sense, one of the design aspects that, um, you know, flat twins, in a sense, have to deal with, like BMWs and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, people just think, well, one piston goes up, one piston goes down, it's simple, they balance each other out. But it's not entirely the case, and in a sense, you've got two pairs here, so these pistons are going up and down together, and these pistons are going up and down, so there's this constant exchange between the two. Any road, so I just thought I'd give, while I've got this like this, I just thought I'd give you a physical... Uh, a look see you know you can we can physically see how much this is on the other case in there's these gaps here you can see that there's these cutbacks but there isn't there there is there and obviously on these sides we need to close the cases and they're not there but there's always an asymmetry to this and it's difficult to try and get design the best of both worlds you'd want an ideal volume for every single one and a passage that is actually bigger than the pistons or exactly equal to the pistons stuff like that but that's the reason why sometimes you might see cylinder, um, you know, the sleeves and stuff, and the, or the, basically they're just straight up castings. Um, you might see they've got these scallops in them. That's just to aid in this flow from one cylinder to another. Because you want the quickest, um, or you want the least amount of latency, you want the least, least amount of lag between one cylinder transferring, you know, basically the air fuel, uh, not air fuel mix, fucking I'm thinking two strokes, uh, that moves the air from one side to the other because they are, you know, in they're basically opposed to each other they're going up and down so to that effect um you know like i say cutting these back and allowing the air to have the shortest path basically because these pistons are directly opposite each other so when one is descending the other one is you know uh, rising so to try and cut down the latency they open up these passages a bit hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit